Hello and welcome. This is the fourth episode in the wildlife series and this one is focusing on invertebrates. In the episode we're going to be looking at what an invertebrate actually is, how to help them and specifically looking at how to help insects. And we're also going to learn how you can do a bug hunt and identify the species you could find as well as some other crafts. In this first part of the video we're going to be looking at what an invertebrate actually is. Going to be covering the seven types of invertebrate and in this first part of the video we're going to be looking at what an invertebrate actually is. Going to be covering the seven types of invertebrate and looking at what the characteristics are that make them that type of animal. These animals are single celled meaning that there's not lots of different parts to their body or their makeup like us, they have only one single cell. So in your body you have billions of cells and it's as if just one of them is an animal. The other thing about these is that although there's lots of them, you have to have a microscope to be able to see them. So another type we're looking into now is annelids. Seems a bit of a funny word, but it's actually just worms. Um, these include the worms in your garden, and if you get a chance and go to your garden and find some worms, you'll see that the worms have segmented parts, meaning there's little lines on their body, and that's one of the defining features of an annelid or worm. Echinoderm seems like quite a hard word, but it just means spined skin. Animals which have spined skin are, and have no backbone, as we remember our invertebrates, are considered echinoderms. These animals include starfish, like you can see in the picture, sea cucumbers and sea urchins. The next type is mollusks. These animals have soft bodies and have most have a shell to protect them. Um, octopuses and squid don't, but your garden snail, for example, does and so do clams. We're going to be looking at what a crustacean is. Crustaceans are animals which have a hard shell to protect their body, like this crab or shrimps and prawns, for example. They also only have two body parts, a head and an abdomen. The last two types of invertebrates often get confused with each other, arachnids and insects. The difference between these two are arachnids have eight legs, so this includes spiders, but it also includes mites and scorpions. Insects on the other hand are six-legged animals and they have three distinct body parts. They have a head, a thorax and an abdomen and you can see the three parts labelled on the picture. The other thing that insects also have is they always have two antennae which are also labelled. This section is looking at how we can help insects and although most of the activities we've done from the previous videos will help them this one is specifically for insects and can help find them a home and in some cases places for them to lay their eggs. So we're going to be building a bug hotel. Bug hotels are really useful places for them to find shelter and depending on what materials you put in it will be attracting to different insects. It's always important to add variety and you'll see from the pictures that different ones have different sections so there's some with lots of branches, there's some with lots of pine cones, and there's some with lots of ceramics. It's kind of up to you how you make your bug house. Just make sure you have an adult to help if you're going to be cutting or breaking anything. So this most simplest version of a bug hotel is to use a large ceramic pot and stuff it with lots of different material. Um, it's often helpful to bind each type of material together. So, for example, if you have branches, bind it together with some twine and include it with rocks, leaves, pine cones, 
try to not have any plastic or any rubbish in the bug hut as this isn't healthy for the insects. In this section, we are going to be looking at how you can do a bug hunt at home using two different techniques. We're also going to cover what equipment you'll need and what identification sheets might be useful and I've included links to the identification sheets so you can print them off. I'm going to be looking at a couple of methods of bug hunting and all of these ones you can do for free at home and unless you want to buy equipment. The first is catch and release where you're using transparent Tupperware, plastic Tupperware, whatever you have at home with lid um, to catch the insects. There's also catching them with your hands which works fine but with the Tupperware it is less likely you're going to crush any insects. The second method is doing it with a white sheet. Now there's a few ways you can use the white sheet to catch insects. The first one I'm going to discuss is the is hanging it at dusk with a bright light behind it so a torch or your phone can work well um, but you have to find somewhere to put the torch so that it doesn't move and then insects will be attracted to the light and will land on the sheet and you'll be able to see all the insects um, I wouldn't recommend trying to catch them because they'll fly off or you might injure them unless you have a net the other way you can use the sheet is to shake the bushes and trees and have the sheet underneath and then when you shake the bushes and trees the insects will drop off of them and land on the sheet and you'll be able to look at them. Uh, if you catch any insects and you want to ID them I've included some basic ID sheets in with the video and you can download and print them off but the other great way is just take a photo and then you can just so I've included some links to lots of different activities that are insect related for you to try at home. The one I'm going to quickly cover in the video is one that incorporates the global concern of plastics. So the thing we're looking at is making your own insects out of plastic bottles. You'll see from the picture that these ones, although are use the same materials, look completely different. You can make whatever you like out of it and I look forward to seeing what you make. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode all about invertebrates. Hope you enjoy making some of the crafts and next week we're going to be looking at mammals and that will be the fifth and final episode in the series.